Knobcon coverage brought to you by Signal Sound and Lefaco, Future Sound Systems, Low Gain Electronics, Steady State Fit, Funk, and Expert Sleepers. So we're here at the Modbat booth with Chris Meyer of Learning Modular. Hey, how's it going? Yeah, interesting that you're at the Modbat booth. Yes. Um, you're not working for Corey, you're not his salesman for the uh, day. I'm not a salesman, <laughs> but it just so happens like Osiris has become one of my favorite Vizios. And I've been using it as a gateway to, to do two things. One, how to get my studio modular into my performance modular. Okay. And two, how to explore an idea we originally did with the Profit VS back in the 80s and trying to bring that idea into Eurorack modules today. So I decided to make my own wave pack of waveforms for the Osiris oscillator that Corey and MobApps are going to be releasing later on. Oh, great. So it's, I mean, before we jump like, into the wave pack, why Osiris? What, what about Osiris was the one that drew you to? It you know, several, this is going to be my wavetable machine, if you like. It has like. several characters to it that I really like. One, its tracking is fantastic. You can even turn on the quantizer at the front end, but even without that, it tracks multiple octaves really well. Two, you can bring your own waveforms into it if you want to. Three, it has higher fidelity and more waveforms than most of the other oscillators out here. But what really got me to it is its ability to sound really, really fast. In addition to having one waveform, and I'll just bring one up briefly here, it has the ability to modify those waveforms, including doing a detune, where I start getting a chorusing sound, and then I can add up a sub-octave. So from this one oscillator module, I get like a 3 VCO sound. Yeah. And it's just a fantastic thing inside a patch to get this big, fat sound, particularly in a small, portable system. Yeah. So that was, that's what attracted me to using Osiris and said, look, I need this in my performance system and in my studio system just because it's, it's so great sounding and so compact. So you mentioned like this bringing in your studio system into the live system. Yeah. What do you mean by that? My studio system has like 20 VCOs in it, and I've chosen each one to be different because I like the waveforms or the sounds or what they can do, or I do crazy cross-patching, like audio rate cross-fading between waveforms, things like that. But in my portable system, I have a really limited amount of space for VCOs. Yeah. So when I started performing out again after COVID, it's like, how do I get my studio sound out on the road? So one idea was, let's go sample all my favorite waveforms from the studio system, make those as a wave pack, throw them into the Osiris oscillator, and now inside of small space, I have my favorite waves from my 20 VCO system in my small portable yeah. system. Plus the subs and the other processing we've just heard. Yeah, so I ended up creating four different kind of flavors of sounds. Like one patch I call the East Coast patch. So it's different things I've done with normal analog oscillators, like audio rate pulse with modulation and um, crossfading, different sorts of pulse waves and sawtooth waves out of the audio frequency generator. Just things a lot richer sounding than your typical sawtooth wave or square wave. So that's my East Coast wave bank. What I call my West Coast wave bank is heavily surge influence, surge wave multipliers in particular. The different rectifications, the different wave folding sounds you can get out of it, and also the resonant EQ sound. And I didn't just put like one single sine wave or triangle through these. I was using their harmonic oscillator from Verbos to do like first and second harmonics, first and third harmonics. What I would do on a normal patch in my studio and make a single wave out of that combination inside here. The third bank is what I call the format bank because I really love vocal sounds. So the first half of it are different phonemes from the LimaFlow Moto Mouth module, but I've rearranged them to crossfade more in a way that I personally like. And then the second half are different formats that I've hand tuned from the Mannequin Three Sisters and then from the Rare Waves Grendel to get more of the sort of peaky sort of format sort of sounds. It's a fascinating idea to not just take a concept like shifting through harmonics or a wave tip, but you're, it's like you're morphing between modules as well. Very much so, because I mean, what are my favorite sounds? Let's go ahead and have them in here, but I can also crossfade in between them. And then the fourth bank I call the harmonic bank. The first half or so are different types of basically tube overdrive, starting with simple sine waves and triangle waves, nice warm sign, to sawtooth waves and complex waves, with increasing amounts of overdrive to them. And then the second half are different additive oscillators that I have. Verbo's harmonic oscillator for an analog kind of drawable or organ sort of sound. And then the Chaos um, Odessa to get those really strange higher harmonic sounds and mixtures. So that's what I was doing with the X dimension inside these oscillators, is getting my favorite waveforms from my studio into this guy. But then on the Y dimension, I wanted to do something different than just have more waveforms. One of the unique things about the Prophet VS, one of the first machines that could crossfade in X and Y dimensions, is it actually had four different oscillators in the four corners that could be tuned to different intervals. So as you crossfade, you go between different pitches, and that's not normally a feature you have inside a Eurorack oscillator. So I asked, how can I replicate that? 
I basically took a harmonic approach. As I took my waveforms, treated them like harmonics, so instead of one cycle per wave, I said, let's put in two cycles. Let's put three cycles in one wave. Four cycles for two octaves. Five for two octaves in the third. Six cycles for two octaves in the fifth. I skipped the seventh because it's a bit inharmonic. And then all the way up to the eighth, um, eight waveforms or three octaves above. So on the y-axis, I have all these different tunings that I can go ahead and morph between while I'm performing. So I can have one axis changing the waveforms, and this is particularly fun for things like the uh, vocal formats, and then go between different musical intervals using, say, the velocity output or another line from my sequencer, yeah. using particularly the unipolar output from your random step module. I love trigger a different note, a different random value in every step, and end up with a different pitch interval, which works particularly well when this is layered with another oscillator, or I bring up the chorusing, bring up the sub-octave, and now I have this really thick sound, and you can hear the relationships of the different harmonics on top of that fundamental subharmonic. Yeah. I love that. Which is a very typical musical technique, but a static pitch that drones yeah. against one that moves. But I have fun doing this down with every note with my sequencers. So I go ahead and have like a standard bass line, but then have the harmonic on top riding to different musical intervals as the sequence steps through. Yeah. So those are the two techniques I really tried to get into this wave pack was how do I get my different waveforms into here and morph between different modules, but then also do the trick of being able to crossfade between different tunings and intervals as well. And I think that's unique so far in the Eurorack world. And frankly, I hope more people steal this idea because it's been a really cool patch idea and a really cool performance idea. You know, we're going to give away this wave pack through ModBap and I hope more people get to take advantage of it musically. I'm already using it live. Yeah, well, the intervals aside, just the concept of like sampling the studio system. Here's yeah. a complex patch that I can then go perform with. On a module that's still nice to perform with and isn't just a little sample player or... And it's a no compromise approach to having less yeah, space. Yeah, I know a lot of people do a lot of pre-recordings, you know, sample entire sounds or entire patches to play back live. I just haven't got there. I still want to perform everything when I'm playing live. Yeah. So I'm really trying to think of ways of how do I get my big module into my small system but still make it performable. Yeah. And that's been a real goal. Great. Well, I'll put links in the description to ModBap and Learning Modular. Awesome. And this is coming soon. Yes. Great. Thanks very much. Good to see you.